Well, everybody, this is Brother and Pastor Craig from strministries.org, and I've got another video for you today as I figured I'd go and take a walk and get one out there for you because there has been a lot of things that have been going on uh, in the world since uh, last uh, week. And so I just thought I would share some more information with you to let you see how all this uh, New World Order business through COVID-19 is really coming to pass very fast and it is disrupting this world in every way, shape or form that it possibly can. So hold on for the rest of my comments at the end of this. Inquiring minds want to know, are the reported deaths from COVID-19 truly deaths from COVID-19? To address this question, we need to discuss death certificates since death certificates are the basic source of information about mortality. The discussion of death certificates is not a fun one. We have all grieved so many losses in our lifetimes. Still, we need to talk about it because they are the basis of the so-called death rate of COVID-19. History changing decisions are being made due to these figures despite the fact that they are flat out wrong based on data that is insufficient and often inaccurate. Few people know how much individual power and leeway is given to the physician, coroner, or medical examiner signing the death certificate. How do I know this? I've been filling out death certificates for over 30 years. More often than we want to admit, we don't know with certainty the cause of death when we fill out death certificates. That is just life. We are doctors, not God. Autopsies are rarely performed, and even when an autopsy is done, the actual cause of death is not always clear. Physicians make their best guesstimate and fill out the form. Then that listed cause of death, whatever we list, is entered into a vital records data bank to use for statistical analysis, which then gives out inaccurate numbers, as you can imagine. Those inaccurate numbers then become accepted as factual information, even though much of it is false. So, even before we heard of COVID-19, death certificates were based on assumptions and educated guesses that go unquestioned. When it comes to COVID-19, there is the additional data skewer that is, get this, there is no universal definition of COVID-19 death. The Center for Disease Control, updated from yesterday, April 4th, still states that mortality, quote unquote, data includes both confirmed and presumptive positive cases of COVID-19. That's from their website. Translation, the CDC counts both true COVID-19 cases and speculative guesses of COVID-19 the same. They call it death by COVID-19 they automatically overestimate the real death numbers by their own admission. What's up, All right, man. Before you go, baby. You can take out the mask. The uh, case fatality rate's like 0.1 to 0.3, according to the USC. Is that really? That's, uh, that's, that's reassuring. USC. Everybody here has been vaccinated anyway. USC and LA County Public Health came up with a study. They found that there were 7,000 cases in California, but they really believe that there are anywhere from 221,000 to 442,000 people who were infected. Really? Yeah. So that makes it 0.1 to 0.3? Okay. There's a study you came out with? Or? Yeah, just give it to that. So it suggests the case fatality rate is about 10. But it seems to be. Well, it's just because you're right in line with the flu. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. So it was a hoax. Uh, I don't think it was a hoax. <laughs> Today, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio shifting focus to food insecurity during the coronavirus pandemic. This crisis is now adding to that number of people who are food insecure every day because literally people are running out of money every single day. While over a million people in New York City were food insecure before COVID-19, including one in every five children, as unemployment grows, many are going hungry. Well, after the state of New York, no state in the country has been hit harder by this virus than the state of New Jersey. As of today, New Jersey has more than 71,000 cases of it. More than 3,100 people have died so far. 
Since the 21st of March, all residents in the state have been under a stay-at-home order, and that's had a big predictable economic effect. In the past month, 577,000 New Jerseyans have filed for unemployment. And concretely to do this, the Holy Father has constituted a group called a Vatican Commission for COVID-19. Church held a service like none other this morning. Reporter Sydney Gray was there as churchgoers listened from their cars. It feels really good to be able to go to church. I miss it. It was Nicole Dye's first time visiting New Life Fellowship Church. This is great. I could do this every Sunday. This is great. And the point of this commission is uh, to serve as the Pope's instrument and Pope's way of reaching out to the churches all around the world to first find out what they're doing and to see how the Holy See or this commission can be of support for them to realize their own particular objectives against this virus. The Holy See then comes along to promote them to be protagonists of their own situation and applying the solutions that they have developed themselves to deal with this virus. Second thing is to also invite all of humanity, starting from these communities, to begin to think about the world of tomorrow, recognizing that this virus has forced us to make an experience of life in a way that we probably have never you know, done. And so it is to begin to think about a new future, begin to think about new ways of doing things, begin to think of new form of economy, new form of business, new form of technology, begin to think of new form of economy. and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. We're going to take up a new ways of doing things. We're going to take up new form of economy, new form of business, new form of technology, a new form of technology.
With the establishment of this uh, commission, there is the invitation also to recognize a few things. I mean, when we did celebrate globalization in the past, we thought that we were coming together to experience and to live our sense of common humanity, a common human family. That had its challenges, but this disease is basically further to a raw and a very glaring realization of the fact that humanity is one family, that we need to live together, we need to share resources together and show a sense of solidarity. The future is always, uh, you know, cannot be 100% predicted. But with the knowledge that we develop together as a family, we can always come up with measures to enable us to mitigate the impacts of some such things happening to us, happening to us again in the future. Okay, so as you can see in the video, how they're really pushing forward for this uh, economic universal pay and this digital dollar and what have you, it all ties in to the sole purpose of, you know, Vatican control. That's what this is all about. They're already starting to provide uh, free money to a lot of families. Uh, in the world and what have you. I know for a fact, particularly America, where families are receiving a good chunk of money each month and they plan on possibly doing that until uh, January 2021 when they can get the digital dollar uh, in place. ID2020 is a global strategic initiative aiming to help deliver against the United Nations sustainable goal of legal identity for all. There are 1.5 billion people in the world who don't have a legal identity. No legal identity means no bank account and social exclusion. It's going to be an annual conference up until 2030. There will be a mixture of non-governmental organisations, humanitarian agencies, technologists, innovators and policy makers. Technology cannot speak for itself. It requires innovators to talk to policy makers. And this is a forum at which we can do that. The summit will look to examine the issues to work out whether technology can be an enabler for societal good. Once a person has a legal identity, governments and non-government organisations can help people become safe, part of society, financially included and economically active. By bringing the right people to the table, focusing the debate and thinking of solutions that will affect up to a third of the world. The time is right to start today. And on that national ID card, it's going to have all the information uh, about you. And there's going to be a computer chip on that card which will store everything about you so they understand who you are. And on that computer chip, of course, if you've had your vaccinations or not. And if you haven't had your vaccinations, basically you're not going to be able to participate in this world's economy. You're not gonna be able to participate in society because you're a health risk and a health threat is what they're going to say and that eventually if you do not comply with their Sunday laws you're eventually a terrorist because you don't want to go to church and to pray and to stop all these calamities and these sicknesses and viruses and what have you so basically um, those who are not going to comply with this uh, Vatican world global system you are going to be an enemy of it and if you're not going to comply with it, they're gonna take away your allowance and you're not gonna have any money for yourself to live uh, in their system. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so when you put the pieces together regarding everything that's happening in the world today, 
you can clearly see that this system is all built upon worship. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. The Vatican has always been the institution in the seat of Satan since its birth, back in the revelation of Daniel's days and such of the fourth beast that would rise to power. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Who had uh, killed the apostles of Christ, who even hung Christ upon the cross, who did a lot of damage in the dark ages in killing Christians who would uh, be adhering to the uh, King James Bible and what have you. They're going to do it in these last days. If you're not going to worship the Antichrist, then you are going to be destroyed, is what they're basically saying. And today they're tempting everybody to comply with this system through giving out, through giving handouts and what have you. Which you have to understand, as they dangle money as the carrot to uh, make their government and their system look good, there's a big catch to all this in the very end. That if you're not going to comply, they're going to shut your computer chip down and you're not going to participate and a lot of people are going to starve or get thrown in the FEMA camps because they're going to try to go to the grocery store to buy food and you can't. That is why I continue to say to get out into your land of milk and honey, become your own pharmacy, grow your own store, and produce uh, good spiritual fruits while you're out here and to prepare for the end. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. When you look at this Mark of the Beast system, again, it is all about worship. And the computer chip is not the actual Mark of the Beast. It is the instrument by which they're going to enforce their Sunday laws. If when you understand that Rome is the beast, you've got to go to the beast and find out what the beast says their mark is. And they clearly say that their mark And if you take a good look at what's happening in America, you can see how they are rapidly pushing forward uh, their end time agenda. As you take a look at the scenes that are going on in Austin and how the Jesuit co-agitator Alex Jones is stirring things up and they're causing uh, a lot of problems regarding uh, not complying with the social distancing and what have you. And, and that's just all their plans as well. The Jesuit order wants to stir things up to give them a reason to put troops all over the streets. This is why that they're stirring things up today. And that's why you've been seeing a lot of UN vehicles being transported to America over the decades and tanks and foreign vehicles with, with uh, 
uh, crescent moons on them and such because the, the Muslims are going to have everything to do with helping the Vatican's New World Order agenda and beheading the saints and killing them in gas chambers and throwing them in the FEMA camps to re-educate them in these last days. And if they can't re-educate you and put you back into society to be a good citizen of this lawless world, then they're just going to kill you. And I just want everybody uh, to understand now, when you look at this system, again, it's built on tracking, controlling, and forcing us against our will to worship this beast system. And the beast system has a leader, and this leader is AKA Satan, and he's going to appear on the world scene. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom, by reason of thy brightness, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And he's going to appear on the world scene today to put the icing on the cake and to globalize everything in this world for the sole purpose of him being worshipped because he wants to be worshipped. He wants to be like the Most High. And when he steps on the scene, he's going to tempt everybody like he did the Son of God when he came in Matthew chapter 4 tempting Jesus in the wilderness where he offered him all the world and then if he would bow down and worship him he would give it to him and just like he's going to do today if we're going to comply then he's going to allow us to go out into this world and migrate anywhere we want buy what we want have what we want and, and not have to work as much and, and just to enjoy life on earth where he's going to make it feel like it's heaven on earth. But we understand that it's not the Messiah, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, because he's not gonna step foot on this earth until everything has been fulfilled and the new heaven and the new earth are uh, finally here and what have you. Christ is not going to have his uh, kingdom step foot on this earth until it has been cleansed and we land and walk on their ashes in the end. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. 
But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. And so until that time, you can see how these end time events are really coming to pass very quickly. And I don't want you guys to be afraid because there's nothing to be afraid about. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The only thing you need to be afraid of is God. Fear him, keep his commandments, and you shall do good. Follow him and walk in his ways, and you shall overcome this system. Do everything you can to glorify God and to become partakers of His suffering we are going to be called to do. We've got to bear the cross today. We've got to wear the crown today of thorns in order to wear the crown of victory tomorrow. And so I just want you guys to go out there into the streets, wherever that you may possibly be able to go. Explain to the people why all these things are happening like I've been showing you here on our YouTube channel and doing everything you can to open this up to the people. You know, as I watched this year, I kept thinking, this is like the first Good Friday. Jesus was abandoned with only one apostle and his mother standing by. Everyone else, all his supporters and disciples were sheltered behind locked doors, which sounds awfully familiar. We're all in that place now. We feel alone, frightened, but there's hope. Resurrection's coming. It just might take a little longer than we'd like, Brian. Resurrection's coming. It just might take a little longer than we'd like, Brian. Will you come to church with me? That's the question we asked when we surveyed people across America. The results? 80% said they'd be likely to attend if invited by a friend. That's four out of five people in your community. Yet only 2% of churchgoers said they invited anyone to church over the last year. It's time for a change, a movement, uniting over 120 different denominations and reaching over 13 million people, helping churches all over America see an average increase of 25% in attendance on this day and helping your congregation become more outward focused. Back to Church Sunday. Get started today. Add your church to the map for free and take advantage of some of these great resources like postcards, t-shirts, personal inviting tools, banners, and more. Hundreds of people across the country are just waiting to be invited and Back to Church Sunday helps your church, thousands of churches, become a unified front of inviters to connect people to Jesus as we bring people back to church. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city.